Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Mikko Kraszowski, and welcome to episode 90 of That Remote Life podcast, where we hear from location-independent entrepreneurs and professionals so you can learn to quit the cubicle and live life on your terms. Today's episode is another Deep Dive Thursday, during which I get to go down a rabbit hole on a specific topic related to the digital nomad lifestyle. Sometimes I do that by myself, and sometimes I'm joined by a guest, oftentimes someone who has been on the podcast in the past. And today I'm joined by not just one previous guest, but two, because today I'm going to be covering the recent merger of Nomad X and Flatio with the founders of each, Radim Rezek and Dave Williams. Radim was on the podcast earlier this week on episode 89, while Dave joined us a few months back on episode 80. So if you want to listen to those individual interviews, their stories, and a little bit more about the background of the companies, feel free to jump to those episodes and give those a listen. But this merger has the opportunity to really shake things up in the midterm rental market and create real competition for Airbnb as a reliable place for digital nomads to find apartments and houses for rental periods longer than a few weeks, but less than a year, which is really a sweet spot for uh, a lot of us global citizens and digital nomads. We covered a ton of stuff during this roundtable conversation, like what led to the merger, what it means for users of Nomad X and Flatio, and what we as a community can expect in the next few years as they try to expand into the American market and as the number of digital nomads is only predicted to explode due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Before we jump into the episode, though, I'd love to share a recent five-star review we received from Nathan over at Foodie Flashbacker, who says, this is a great podcast about all things related to the digital nomad life. It is a great source of information, and the host does a great job finding unique and interesting interview subjects. Thank you so much for that review, Nathan. Uh, And if you guys love great food and traveling, you should definitely check out Nathan's website over at foodieflashpacker.com. He has some really great resources on where to find the best foods all around the world. If you'd like to leave a review and get a shout out on the next episode of TRL yourself, I made it very easy to do so. All you have to do is just head over to ratethispodcast.com forward slash TRL. That's ratethispodcast.com forward slash TRL and write your review. That's it. It's super, super easy. If you're enjoying this podcast, leaving a review is one of the best ways to support us. Reviews are a key statistic that Apple looks at in order to determine how to rank a podcast. So your review will directly help us climb the rank boards and attract new listeners. So I just want to say thank you in advance for leaving a review if you choose to do so. If you want to check out the full show notes and a list of resources mentioned on this episode, you can do so over at thatremotelife.com forward slash episode 90. That's thatremotelife.com forward slash episode all spelled out followed by the number 90. All right, you guys, without further ado, let's dive into this deep dive Thursday roundtable with Dave Williams and Radim Rezek. All right, Radim, Dave. Welcome back to the show, guys. How's it going? Hey, Hi, very good, Nico. All right, very cool. It's well, great to so be here. I know I'm excited to have you back, um, Dave. Uh, you were on the podcast back on episode 80, so thanks for coming back and redeem. You were just uh, on, but I'm really excited to have you guys both on the podcast together because we're going to talk about the merger that happened between Flatio and uh, Nomad X. So first of all, congratulations to both of you guys for that. Um, that's super exciting. I remember, uh, Dave, you sent me a Facebook message letting me know, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is cool. Things are moving. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but before we kind of dive in, I do want to ask, uh, we talked about this a little bit before we hit record, but what is the name of the business going to be moving forward? Dave, you mentioned that they're both kind of going to continue moving and operating under their own brands. What is the plan with that? Like how, like how are things going to click together? Adim, do you want to answer that one? 
Yeah, sure. I, I thought that the, the Mitko asking you, but definitely we 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 join forces together because we think that we we find the the way how to cooperate with each other. They build a great business there in Portugal. It was really awesome to to meet him because of his background and his experience. And uh, yeah, we uh, we we talk a lot during the summer because. Uh, Dave has a nomadex has you know a lot of apartments, thousands of apartments in Portugal, with for an affordable prices, and this is what we are looking for. And uh, we have a technology uh, which is great for for the landlords of nomadex, and this is why we merge and uh, put the forces together to uh, uh, to be more stronger and uh, help the better services. So this is basically the main reason why we join together. And uh, yeah, we are so far so good. So how are yeah. things going and on to- On my, my end- Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, so we'll make, well, just uh, like a little bit on my end. Um, yeah, so we're super excited to be combining uh, with Radim's company, with Flatio. They've been in business now since 2009 with Flatio getting started in 2015. So they have a much firm from a technology perspective and also in terms of their geographic reach. Um, Radim also brings, you know, he's been in this industry since 2009, originally starting in the student market. They broadened out to Flatio, which is a broader segment. And I think no, the Nomad X brand will continue and really focus on digital nomads and remote workers, where Flatio will be kind of the overall umbrella, really covering everything is my understanding. Uh, really with Radim running the whole show, I will still run Nomad X and run it as a separate entity, but really the main focus in terms of the growth and everything will really be on the, uh, the Flatio business and we'll be kind of piggybacking. Sorry, we lost you there for a second, Dave, but I'm curious for the digital nomads that are listening, are you going, is Nomad X as a platform now going to have Flatio's listings on Nomad X as well, or how is that going to work? Yeah, I can yeah so that. Yeah. Go, yeah, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Radim. Yeah, you go for it. No, of course, uh, we will, all of our listings, uh, which we are now transformed uh, from Nomadix to Flatio, and, but all other as well, which we have now in Central Europe, uh, will be, you know, displayed in Nomadex very soon. And uh, all of Nomad, uh, Nomad people can reserve that very, very smoothly and uh, it will be possible to, to do all of the transaction with all possible features that we have and hopefully we get there. So as I could explain the advantages that we will provide to them. So yeah, it would be great uh, because uh, Nomad X has a huge uh, connection to Nomad uh, community all around the world and it's already working. You know, we, we already displaying some of our listings there and we see uh, a lot of reservation already coming through Flatio from Nomadex. So this is awesome that uh, the, and these people review us very well. So I'm happy for that. Mm. Yeah. And we like, some of the hosts that have been wanting to get listed on Nomadex, like we had one host in uh, Budapest, for example, and we hadn't gotten to Budapest yet. And I just reached out to her saying, now we're in Budapest. She said, well, I'm already on Flatio. So <laughs> she was telling me how much she loved the, the platform. So this is actually yeah, one of our one of our connections from the Freedom X Festival. Uh, Stella, I was, she, they've got a couple properties in Budapest. <laughs> so yeah, we're really we're super excited about it. I think you know Mad X, you know we're going to be using all the Flatio technology. We're going to have all of their listings, and you know eventually as we go forward, initially it'll just be populated with Flatio listings. But we see an opportunity in talking to Radim about the idea of even becoming more of an aggregator. So bringing in other third party inventory to complement everything we have from Flatio. We're not gonna do that immediately, but that's kind of our, I say our mid to longer term plan, depending on how the industry picks up and the opportunities and kind of see how we see the results kind of uh, coming together from the merger. But we're, we don't wanna rush into anything too quickly. The main focus at the moment is just merging all the, all the hosts and the guests onto the Flatio platform, making sure that's a smooth transition really gearing up for 2021 because we think 2020 was the year for remote work 2021 and going forward is going to be the year for the digital nomad or the remote work traveler so we think next year is going to be huge it's kind of like uh the year of mobile was supposed to happen all during the 2000s and didn't happen until about 2010 2011 we think the same thing with the nomads while they've been out there we're expecting a huge increase coming out of this pandemic and we want to be well positioned for that uh, in terms of our partnership with uh, radim super entrepreneurial business. We think there's a lot of growth opportunity and get you know, super excited with the energy of the younger team and they've been in the business for a while. 
I'm not a, I'm not an apartment rental guy. I just got into this business and I realized I needed to team up with someone that really has expertise in renting a lot of apartments. I love the marketing side, my background, I'm more of a marketer. So it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. We're really excited to be a part of it. And they've really thought the back end through really, really well. So we're like really excited in terms of looking at the metrics and looking at how they've set up the platform. We just think, yeah, it's gonna provide an awesome foundation going forward and probably save about two years on our development time. Yeah, and you know, what, what's great that we have a, we are, you know, project which is, you know, product driven. And Dave with his, you know, marketing uh, skills and experience, he has a great uh, skill to onboard a, a huge amount of great landlords and listings, which we can see on the results of Nomadics up to 10, on, in less than two years, he onboard around, you know, more than 2000 listings in affordable prices in more than, you know, 30 or 50% cheaper than uh, listings on Airbnb, which is super great. And when we give all these landlords our technology and provide these affordable uh, listings to, to nomads, this is exactly what we are doing because this is the toughest part on the market to find a proper affordable listings for a few months because it's impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, as you described to me yesterday, your experience when you're moving to Cincinnati, you know, it was, it's a horrible things to, which is happening when you want to uh, live somewhere for a few months. And uh, together with Dave's great background and our technology, we can really, you know, win this uh, midterm rentals market and hopefully we will very soon. So, yeah, super exciting to be in this, you know, midterm rentals sector. And, uh, yeah, we have all the cards to, uh, to, to grow. Yeah, to echo Dave, like what you were saying earlier, I think um, I totally agree with your timeline. It's actually been really interesting speaking with friends of mine who have no interest in this world, but have been kind of forced to work remotely because of COVID. And uh, I think like what we've been talking about in the industry and in sort of the space is going to happen in 10 years, I think is going to happen in like five now um, or, or less. And I think where previously maybe the whole digital nomad world was for entrepreneurs, people who are kind of like making their own work, their own job, they were generating their income. Income. The next stage is really going to be for these remote employees who uh, are maybe full-time employed at a company that is just remote and they're totally fine with them working from wherever. And so I think that is going to be a big boost in the digital nomad movement because all of a sudden it's not going to be just entrepreneurs who are working remotely it's really going to be all of these companies that have been working out of offices but have let their workforce not work remotely so i totally agree with you dave even if it's not everyone that's working in offices becoming digital nomads a percentage of the people that are working remotely are going to be like well, I don't want to, you know, live in, you know, Oklahoma and work. If I can work remotely, I might as well go, you know, to uh, Portugal or, or, you know, to, you know, Prague or Brno or, or whatever. But um, I do want to ask you, Redeem, this is over to you. Where did the idea for this merger come from? Really, like, how did that happen? Why did you decide to, in the end, you know, acquire Nomad X? Mm hmm I think initially contacted, uh, Dave contacted me through the email and it was a really nice message. And I said, why not? Let's, let's, uh, let's contact each other and talk about the potential cooperation because at this start, it was just a standardized cooperation. I think uh, it was, I think in, in July, uh, 2020 or something like that. And uh, yeah, we started to talk with each other about, you know, Nomad Eggs, about the Flatio, uh, he, uh, you know, he was exploring the opportunities, the best opportunity for flat, for Nomadex, what, what, what he will do next. And uh, yeah, we were, uh, I was really excited about Dave's experience. I've already mentioned that, uh, but his background from the US is super great. Uh, all the listings in Portugal, we were really happy for them. And uh, during the time, during the summer, it developed that uh, everything uh, is, is fine and uh, everything's all really smoothly during this summer. I was really surprised. I, I was still expecting some some issues over there <laughs> and uh, nothing happened and everything was super smooth, super efficient. And I'm still, you know, really surprised that everything is done so smoothly, so well. 
we have great relationship, great potential cooperation for the future because Dave, as, as he described already, uh, will be our ambassador strategic advisor for our expansion. And uh, yeah, so in a three months, we were able to, to uh, know each other, to uh, you know, explore the, the synergies between the projects, IT, you know, also all the technology also is uh, putting to each other. So, uh, yeah, it was a really smooth transaction with the great, you know, opportunities in future. And I really enjoyed that. And uh, after the merger, we had uh, also great PR hits and uh, the, a lot of publicity and the timing is also, you know, great. So this give this gives us to flat a lot of energy with our expansion and that we are doing the right thing and uh that's really awesome on that yeah why did you why did you guys decide to continue with two different brands why not for example you know i think about upwork you know when uh there was the merger there with um i believe it was um odesk and i can't remember what the other one was called but when they merged together they you know it created a new brand or whatever Upwork. I'm not really sure, but they, they consolidated in the one name. Why stick with two different names? Why not combine into one and sort of tackle everything together? I think, uh, you know, Radim's got a nice model. He could probably explain it to you better, but you know, my understanding, they have a student brand. They've got this overarching Flatio brand and this Nomad X brand is going to be a little more oriented around the nomads, remote workers. Mm -hmm. So we feel like that helps us segregate some of the audiences a bit, just so we can better market to the audiences, <laughs> offer to them what they're looking for. Um, and the brands are each a little bit different. So yeah, we think like it, there's definitely the opportunity to consolidate brands in the future. And there's definitely one path to go down. But typically we've seen, at least my experience in, dig in the digital space is, you know, really trying to own a certain niche and being the best at that niche is, can be very powerful. So we didn't want to collapse the brands immediately that could be something that we do in the future but i think once we get through the transaction once we start seeing the results and once we kind of just get everything back um, into sort of a normal status post merger integration you know we'll get a get a feel for where things stand but i think at the moment you know we like the idea of having separate and distinct brands plus it gives me an opportunity to continue and oversee the nomad x brand and continue to evolve it and gives us you know further lifeline it also allows us to not have to go out and get additional funding to build technology operate the business because our operational team moved over to flatio our tech team we no longer need our technical team so it really just allows us to kind of you know get the business at a point now where you know before we were we we're investing a lot of money like six figures every month to get the technology where we wanted it mm. to be this really helps us like during this down period um you know, as we kind of see what's next and so we're, it, it's kind of uh you know gives us additional lifeline as well and so like you know one plus one equals three i guess is the idea ultimately <laughs> sure. yeah and i think dave and uh, nomadex build a great environment about the nomadex great community around you know hundreds of thousands members in their facebook groups and they really fo focus on nomadex flat your brand is more broader uh, and that we have a different segment, professionals, students, locals, and we are just, you know, exploring the, uh, the nomads. Uh, and uh, Dave has a great connection to, uh, to, to nomad community. And uh, I hopefully this will continue because, uh, yeah, he understands uh, them and this is important for us. So it's a bit of like a divide and conquer idea where you, you want to kind of have separate brands for separate audiences and really kind of like, like, like focus and dominate those. Yeah, I would gotcha. say. Gotcha. So I was wondering, because really the focus of, and, and, and we've mentioned this several times of, of Nomad X and Flatio is kind of this midterm rental, um, which is for like a few months to a year. Uh, kind of like fitting it in between like what an Airbnb does and then like actual long-term leases. But I'm wondering with Airbnb being as dominant as they are, I'm sure that you feel a little bit of breathing down your neck and that that is something that I know they've in the past tried to focus on. And I'm going to just guess they will in the future. But what do you guys feel like you have that you think Airbnb doesn't that will allow you to win in this market? 
Yeah, I think we have the technology for midterm rentals like adjusted lease agreements for every market. We have the technology for recurring payments. Uh, we have the possibility to actually sign a contract online with our own app. And uh, we have no de deposit needed to, to move into any apartment. And uh, all of these technological things has, you know, the, and they don't have, and for tenants and landlords needs, it's a super important. If you want to move out, you just click on the button, you will terminate. If you want to prolong, you just click and you have, you know, prolonged contract. And uh, these are the things you, you want also if you want to export all of the payments to your accountant because uh, as a landlord, you need to do that. We, we have all, all these features for landlords and tenants and uh, it's completely different uh, from the perspective of, of short-term. Airbnb is, is built uh, their product on short-term uh, things, short-term uh, uh, you know, needs and uh, it's really difficult to combine it. Other than that, uh, we have, you know, landlords who offer, you know, affordable prices. We educate these landlords for uh, how to set properly a price for midterm rents. Uh, Short-term landlords set, it, uh, set these prices really high to maximize the yield. And it's basically impossible to rent an apartment for a uh, for a few months in one row because, you know, people in short term, you know, reserve quite upfront their uh, stays. So it's impossible to, to make a reservation in for three months in one row. So this is, you know, second thing. And uh, yeah, this, this are the main, these two, this is why we succeed. And uh, for them, it will be super, you know, difficult to do that. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I think the the technology you guys have built, it's a, you know, you guys have been doing this for a, lot, for a long time. Airbnb, you know, tried to get into it a while back. They, they didn't have a lot of success. Now they're getting into it again. We're seeing the hosts aren't extremely happy with their solution. They've had some issues where guests have stayed beyond the one month. They don't have a good solution for handling those. They don't offer the contracts. So there's just some things with their solution that not all of the hosts and guests are really that happy with. I think pricing obviously is a huge one for us. And like Radim said, since our hosts are just midterm and long-term, we're able to be a lot more competitive on the pricing. Whereas they're taking a short-term, turning it into a midterm, we're taking a long-term and turning it into a midterm. So there's a, you know, if we're kind of playing in this space in between, which allows us to compete against them in a way, whereas if Airbnb was just focused on mid and long-term, you know, we feel that, you know, they, they could be very successful, but because they are mostly a short-term rental company, we're kind of coming at them from a different angle and they're not as, adept, they're not as uh, proficient in terms of that industry. So mm -hmm. we definitely think we've got a head start on them in this space. Um, we have some very happy customers. And just from reading some of the customer service reviews from Airbnb, we see a lot of gaps in their offering at the moment. Although they do have a lot of listings, they're in a lot of locations, they have that to their advantage. But I think as a, you know, as a challenger brand, we're very, very excited um, to be competing against them. Plus, we feel like we're, we already feel like we were out in front of them anyway. But now, you know, this is just, uh, we're kind of like, you know, it's, it's going to be an exciting next couple of years. I also think that like timing plays a role with it because Airbnb obviously took quite a hit with COVID. And I mean, I know that they sort of reset and thought on their, you know, they, they thought quickly and they launched and well, they had launched experiences already, which lucky for them that they had, but they really focused in on that at once COVID hit. But, you know, it's things like a recession, things like COVID destabilize the established, you know, kind of like, like structure of who's in the lead and stuff like that because COVID hit them hard. They're really having to focus, make sure that, you know, they're covering, uh, you know, all of their ends to make sure that, you know, they don't, get crippled, but on the other side, smaller brands like you guys can really be nimble, move and capitalize on that. So it's, it's almost like a time like this can be really scary for a big giant that needs to make sure that all of their uh, T's are crossed and you guys can kind of move and really capitalize and dominate a space of the midterm rental market. So um, I totally agree with that. Dave, I am curious on sort of the nomad side of things. One of the things that I think Flatio and Nomad X both have going for it, uh, on top of Airbnb, besides what we've been talking about, is 
uh, price. You guys offer a more affordable price. However, taking that out of the equation, what are some of the things that you guys are doing on the Nomad X brand to really like make the experience better for nomads who are renting uh, and to make them sort of shift over into Nomad X instead of something like an Airbnb or other competitors? What are some of those things that you're making on the website or in the process of booking places that people can look forward to uh, when booking with Nomad X? Uh, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of our inventory is generally, and I think this is something, you know, Radim, we talked about this before, but, you know, where Airbnb, a lot of their inventory tends to be in highly touristic areas. That tends to be their, their central focus. Ours tends to be a little bit outside of the real touristic areas. So I think when you rent with, you know, with, the, with us at Nomad X, you're, you're going to find that these apartments tend to be in more local neighborhoods, better connection with the locals instead of staying, like in Lisbon, if you stay down in the city center, it gets super expensive. You got mm -hmm. tons of tourists bumping around with you all the time and you're not really getting a true local experience. It might feel that way the first week or two, but then you realize, wow, I'm like in totally the wrong place, you know? And if you're going to stay somewhere for two or three months at a time or even longer, you really want to, I think we've, we found that a lot of the nomads want to have that local experience. They don't mind hopping on a, you know, some public transportation. They want to be close to local neighborhoods. They want to be paying local prices. So I think that's a big part of it. Um, for us, we've also feel community is super important. Obviously right now we can't do much with communities. So we've actually slowed that down a bit. We do think going forward as nomads start to congregate in certain neighborhoods and certain cities, it provides a really good opportunity for us to allow them to connect with each other very easily. So we really see that as an opportunity going forward for us as well. Uh, we haven't done the best job executing on that at the moment, uh, but that's something we think could be really, really strong in the future. Um, and you know, in the past we have done a lot of events. So we, we throw big parties typically here in Lisbon, like once every month, we bring the whole community together. You're not typically getting that from an Airbnb or some of these other companies. They tend to be more sort of sterile rental organizations. So with us, you're going to, you're not, you know, when you go to these events, you're not going to be hanging out with tourists. You're going to get a chance to meet mm -hmm. the locals, meet other nomads. And that's a big part of what it means to be, you know, on this nomad X journey. Um, also we want to be in these top, you know, nomad locations. We want to bring nomads together. Um, you know, Nomad X is a public benefit corporation. So everything that Airbnb is not is what we want to be. You know, everything they've kind of like, they've lost the focus on the host. They work with a lot of these big operators. As Rateem said, we really like to work with the local people. Most of the, most of the companies only, most of the, uh, it's more mom and pop. So they have like individual apartments. I think Radim quoted on their platform, like 89% of all the listings are just one or two listings from an individual person versus having a lot of inventory from a big organization. So yeah, we want to keep it very local. We want to bring money into the local economy. We feel that the nomads also can bring a lot to the communities. So whereas the tourists are rocking in, you know, they're coming there and they're really taking advantage of some of these apartments. They're creating a lot of disturbances. Our, our guests are quite the opposite, as you know. I mean, they're more professionals. They're working during the day. You know, they need stuff at night. Like they need, like in the apartments, for example, having kitchens that are well equipped so they can cook. You know, Airbnb, they're not going to cook at home as much. So just little things like that, I think, make a big difference. The Wi-Fi on Nomad X, yeah, we, we track all the Wi-Fi so people know, you know what the Wi-Fi is coming into the rental. Uh, so yeah, just some little things like that just make a big difference. We really focus on the service. Um, you know, having worked with Airbnb a lot over the years myself, the service can be a big source of frustration. So I think our service, we really try and focus on service. If the guests contact us, we really try and solve the solution. You know, what's in the best interest for the guest and the host. You don't always get that from Airbnb. So I feel like you were bringing much more of a kind of hands-on entrepreneurial approach to the business and kind of a fresh perspective for the hosts and for the guests than what they're, they've been used to at the Airbnbs and booking.coms and some of these other kind of larger scale companies these days. Plus these guys have been pretty well crushed during the pandemic. They've lost a large percentage of their workforces. So as much as they try and do a good job in all these layoffs, the issue is it's really hard to get corporate morale back on track very quickly if you just laid off everyone's best friend um, mm -hmm. and telling people how important the people are to the company and then letting all the contractors go without much notice, without, without the severances. I think they did a good job with the employees, but they have a large group of contractors. So there's just a lot of negativity that gets built up in these companies. And maybe you thought you were working for a company and it turns out it's not really like that at all. So I think like, you know, where we're coming at it, Radim's been growing the company. We're coming at it really strong from a culture perspective. And we feel like coming out of this pandemic and out of this recession or depression, whatever it is we're in, 
we're going to be super well positioned. And that's always been my background in my prior companies is really innovating during these times of uh, distress. Uh, when the other big guys get off track, that's really the opportunity for companies like ours. So we feel like we're in this transition period. We're well positioned. We've got the technology. We've got the team. Now we just got to scale it. More listings in each one of the markets, more locations, and really create a strong network um, you know, all throughout the world, ultimately. And I think, you know, above all of what, what just Dave described, very nice, uh, we put there that it's absolutely stress-free you know, when you're moving to a new country as a nomad, because it's difficult for you to do it. And we guarantee you that you will move in. Everything will go smoothly. You are able to read the contract before you move. Uh, and these are very important things for, for, uh, for all nomads or tenants. And you can also to call someone and to ask us, you know, because there is a support, a personal support at these big companies, uh, there's impossible to, to be in touch with someone and ask question and not just, uh, you know, robot and so on. So we would like, we really care about uh, the people and we want to be uh, the, your partner. And, uh, you know, if someone moves in through Flatio, we are still with them because we manage all of the payments because we have the, the solution for it. And of course, during the contract, if you have any problem with your landlord or apartment, and if the landlord don't answer, you can always go and uh, call to us or through the app, uh, you know, tell us that where's the problem and we are always there. So it's not like uh, you made a transaction, you paid a service fee and ciao. No, we guarantee you that when you, you know, booking your apartment for a few months, whenever you are and you're traveling through all of the world, we guarantee you that you move in and you can count on us during all of the lease agreement because you are in, you are in a strange country and we have the locals in every country to, to support you there, to, to help you. Uh, where is the best kindergarten if you want, if you have children. And these mm -hmm. are little, these are small things <laughs> which really helps you to, to be really convenient the way how to move in. It's a, it's a small things, but if you sum up, it's really, it could be really stressful to, to, to find a new apartment. And this is what we are trying to solve. Uh, so. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's, I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. It's even though they kind of seem like small things, having all of those small things together do become a big thing, right? So like, for example, you mentioned the Wi-Fi, Dave, that you guys have the Wi-Fi speeds uh, on the website. That's huge. You know, making sure <laughs> that you have a kitchen that is, you can actually use, making sure, like, I remember we were in this Airbnb that looked great. Everything looked fine. And we walked in and I sat down on the couch and the couch was just the most uncomfortable. It's like if a designer said, how can I make a couch that looks like a couch, but isn't a couch? It was this couch. And I was just like, this is great if I'm visiting Madrid for two days and I just want to go out and drink and have tapas. But if I'm going to be here for a month and a half, this is just not going to work. So kind of figuring out these little things to make sure that the Wi-Fi is good, that there's a washer there and kind of having these filters, I think is really huge because it's little things, but all those little things added together are what I think brings a lot of stress to people like myself who move and are constantly on the move and working. So uh, I, I totally agree. I'm super excited to use Flatio and Nomad X next time I'm abroad. Uh, actually, it's funny. Yesterday, I was talking to my wife, Sarah. And she's like, oh, I know Flatio. I've been on their website before when they've been traveling. So uh, <laughs> that's really exciting. But I know you guys mentioned community, the community and not just uh, the digital nomad community, but also the locals is really important to you. And one of the things that I think Airbnb has done quite a bit of damage with is to the local housing market. It's something that you hear from places like Berlin, Amsterdam, a lot of these bigger European cities that are really struggling because locals can't find affordable places to rent because people would rather put their apartment up on Airbnb because they'll make more money out of it. So how do you guys solve that? Why do you guys not create that problem? Um, and, and how do you sort of sidestep that issue? Yeah. We think that we, we bring in, you know, people who, who will work there as a standard 
as a standard neighbor or standard inhabitant of the city. And we, we don't want to focus on the core city centers where are the, these high prices because this is basically where the tourist wants to be. But our clients wants to stay around the city center or, in the, or around the suburb and uh, but with a good transportation and we support these you know uh, in um, landlords who who invest there into their apartment but do want to maximize the profit but want to have some you know good investment for their children definitely and uh, we bring there a good tenant who is reliable solvent able to pay not damage the apartment and uh, so we're looking at these locations with, with the good connections to the city, to the to the to the uh, business centers and uh, shared offices where you could work and easily go back to your apartment, which is affordable for you, and you can easily you still have enough money to to live, because this is I think important, and then you live like a local and you 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 don't spend there in a you know expensive restaurants bars and so on but you want to really adjust for the conditions of the city and this is what we are trying to do uh, this is the most toughest part to find these landlords for our tenants because these landlords at this moment doesn't exist either it's long term or it's short term so we kind of like we must really carefully pick them up to 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 carefully educate them how to set the properly the price and this is why we don't damage this rental market and uh because we have these tenants who have the limited budget we don't have these who who can pay like thousands of of, uh, of euros monthly for the apartment but we have normal people who who earn i don't know two thousand dollars monthly and wants to pay at maximum you know 50 percent of their income which means you know around one thousand dollar you know, monthly, this is the budget and uh, we want to provide them these apartments. So, yeah. yeah. The other thing that Radim was mentioning earlier too, to me is the, that they also support, I think 20% of their bookings are from local people. So it's not mm-hmm. just people that are coming in as tourists. These are actually, you know, some local people that are looking to live in a city for a shorter period of time. We have the ability to cater to them. That's like a big, that's a big portion of their segment. I also feel that a lot of these cities are all trying to track this tech talent. <laughs> it's very hard to try and get the tech people these days because it's so competitive. Well, what we're basically providing is a funnel of these top tech people around the world, these digital nomads, these real thought leaders and innovators, bringing them into the city, having them stay in the city for a few months. Generally, we've seen as the nomads, they put on workshops, you know, they get together, they're interacting with the locals, they're providing a lot of value back to the city. Um, yes, it's not a long-term rental, but the price, you got to realize these apartments, they're all fully furnished. So although the long-terms, they're typically, you got to furnish it yourself. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. I mean, to furnish an apartment, it's probably at least 10 or 20 grand if you go to Ikea. I have a lot of experience so, with that at the moment. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Having furnished an apartment for a year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's a very big investment to make and for just a short stay. So it's, it's one of these things where I think it's, it's hard to really measure apples to apples because our apartments, they usually cover utilities. So a lot of times cleaning might be included and other things. So it's like, it's not always apples to apples. Sometimes, sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes the local people feel, yeah, these prices are too high, but actually I think it's super affordable, especially in this current environment. We saw that prices were dropping like 30, 40, 50% over the last like four or five, six months with the pandemic going on. So affordability has become like uh, you know, it's, everything's much more affordable. Whereas in Lisbon, I'd say a year or two ago, I mean, you couldn't get a, you couldn't get apartments for, it's very hard to find an apartment to begin with. And if you did find one, it was super expensive. Now things are coming back more into a reasonableness range. So I think that's a good thing for our business. And as we're hitting economic issues, people are looking for affordability. So you think about Groupon in the last, <laughs> in the last uh, recession, Groupon was real big. All these deal sites were real big. Well, I think what you're going to see is, you know, people aren't going to want to stay as much at the fancy hotels. They're going to be looking for affordability. They're going to be looking to live in more local type places. So we think we're really well positioned for that at the moment. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of things we think we can do to become better in the future. But I think at the moment, we feel like we've got a really nice foundation. 
Yeah, because imagine when you are a local, you live in a big city where is a w- more than one million people. You, you, most of the people who lives there are from the smaller villages around these big cities. And when you are there, you don't have any grandmas, uncles around when you start renovating and you could move to, move to their apartments that, and you don't want to pay for a hotel. So for these local people, there is no alternative to go. To, and you don't want to go around long-term listings and ask them, please move me in. No, it's possible to do it everything online thanks to our virtual tool, virtual reality, and all this technology, and just smoothly move in for a month because you're renovating your apartment, and we have the solution for them. And this is great because then you can find a nice people around. You could meet them as a landlord, you because you can you can meet other people like mm-hmm. that and you don't have to do yeah, it every day you can do monthly and it's much more yeah, we, convenient yeah, we've, for had, them. Yeah, we've had a lot of the guests and hosts really build nice relationships too so mm-hmm. after the stay where they might even want to go visit each other in their home country so it's yeah, we really try and bring the guests and the host together and form a relationship and they're kind of their uh you know their mentor in this new city and a lot of times it's really fun for the host to meet people from all around the world and get this global perspective and meet these forward thinking digital nomads and remote workers it's exciting here in portugal because remote work is really isn't a much of a thing here in portugal and now all of a sudden it's becoming this like remote work haven for digital nomads and they're all getting finally caught up to it but in the past yeah it's very unusual for people to work remotely here in Portugal. Meanwhile, we've got all these nomads that have been doing it here for the last you know, five or six years. So it's, it's an exciting time, I think. And, well, and everyone's kind of a little scared of it. Yeah, I think people can be a little scared of this stuff because it's new and they don't really know what to think about it. Uh, but it's the future, you know, so we've got to adapt. And the, the short-term stays aren't sustainable, which we've seen, obviously, during this pandemic. You know, it's like all the short-term lets are, are gone. A lot of the short-term, they're coming into these countries over a two-month period and just destroying a lot of these beautiful mm-hmm. locations. So I think it's a much more sustainable model going forward. Uh, maybe it's not perfect, but it's much better than this like three day, average three day stay from Airbnb working with a big corporation. It's just not the, mm-hmm. you know, it's not the field they were going for when they get started. Well, and it's interesting. And I think like you kind of mentioned this is what happens to a community when digital nomads do move in. You know, these are people who, if you're moving from, you know, these are people who are well paid generally who go into a place that can, you know, kind of like infuse some cash into a location that may be into an economy that maybe doesn't get as much cash normally. And it's interesting to see what happens to that community, to that economy, like a perfect example. And one that I think has been like an interesting test for this has been Bonsko in Bulgaria, which I've known my entire life. And it's a tiny little town that outside of ski and ski and snowboarding and these sort of winter sports didn't really have much else of an economy. And now they've attracted tons of these digital nomads. And I had a conversation with um, somebody who was like, you know, what do, what do the locals think about this? And they're like, well, all these grandmas and grandpas have no idea what's going on, but they're kind of like, Hey, things seem to be, you know, like all of a sudden, you know, prop, you know, they're buying up property there and stuff like that. So I think it's interesting the play that's going to occur um, going forward, uh, not just in small towns like Bonsko, but like we talked about uh, secondary and sort of tertiary cities in the United States, what happens is all this tech talent moves out of big cities like New York and San Francisco and LA and moves into these smaller towns and, and, and kind of secondary cities. It's going to be really interesting. And I think, um, you know, companies like Flatio and, and, and you guys at Flatio and NomadX to move to a city and know that, hey, I can test the city for a year or six months because I can use this platform to find a flat um, is going to be really, really important. Um, Sort of heading towards wrapping up, I want to ask both of you guys this, um, you know, maybe you guys can take a turn answering this, but where do you see this relationship and NomadX and Flatio as companies, where where is it in five years and what can people look forward to? Radim, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, I think in five years, we will have hundreds of thousand listings all around the world together to provide people uh, really great apartments around the world with possibility to move in smoothly online and stress-free, very convenient. This is, this is our vision to build this affordable supply around the world. And uh, this is what we like to deliver to all of nomads and other tenants 
including the locals. This is our vision and hopefully we will get there really soon. And uh, this is what I'm really excited about because it's a huge thing to, to educate all of the markets, all the long-term landlords who, who just do their long-term leases and do want to go to do online because there is a still huge of people who don't want to do things online and love papers and love all of these things. In, in, even the, the, the printers and papers are so expensive and uh, we just already automatize all of this. So for tenants and landlords, you don't have to do all of this mess. We, you just enjoy the meeting with your tenant. This is what we want to do. We do all of the administrative things, all of the payments, enjoy your apartment. There is the reviews and enjoy your stay there. Here is the community around. And we have all of these hundreds of thousands of apartments around the world. And uh, if you have a bank account in uh, Bulgaria and moving to US for three months, it's okay. Pay through the local bank and we will transfer it easily uh, to US landlord through our US bank account. We have everything set. Everything is managed already. We just need to spread our technology all around and help this and to solve these problems to find easily apartment for a few months in affordable prices because this is a huge thing and problem still even in us and the same in europe and asia the same so uh yeah this is my vision to it dave i'm just, kind of I'm just excited over. I just toss it over to you and add on, uh, Dave. I <laughs> yeah, want to, sure when in answering this question, I'd also like to give you a little bit of a twist of like not only where is Nomad X in five years, but I love, I'd love to hear your opinion on, you know, we've kind of touched on it, but where is the digital nomad and where do you think sort of the remote working movement is going to be um, also in five years? Okay. Um, let's see here. So I think, yeah, the, it's been interesting because I think w when I first got into this business and, and experienced the nomad lifestyle my, at first myself, it's just, it's, I didn't realize how such, how it was such an early adopter audience. Um, you read a lot in the press about it and you think it's a much bigger audience than I think it really is. Mm -hmm. So that was what surprised me the most over the last couple of years. I think what you're going to see happening over the next three, four, five years is this real explosion in the number of remote work travelers, the number of digital nomads. You're gonna have people that are basically traveling the world, experiencing the world for the first time in a much different way. Because most people, I think they've experienced the world on short-term trips for a week or two or a few days in a city. They're really gonna become much more global citizens. So I think at the moment, what we're seeing is that the individuals around the world are becoming much more global and the nations are coming, becoming much more <laughs> you know, nationalized. So it's kind of crazy. The governments are moving in the opposite direction of the people. But I really feel like in five years, you're really going to have the ability for, for anyone to be able to live and hopefully work from anywhere and travel and experience this lifestyle anywhere throughout the world. I think you're going to see things like, obviously, SpaceX. I know you're a big fan of SpaceX. <laughs> I think you were wearing the SpaceX t-shirt last time. But we got the Starlink, which is going in at the moment. I think Amazon's oh, working yeah. on something similar. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's basically going to provide Wi-Fi anywhere in the world. So I think what you're seeing right now is a real focus on some of these bigger cities has been like what I've seen with the nomads, they've kind of aggregated to like, there's maybe top 10, top 20 cities. But I think what you're going to see is also as people become more knowledgeable about these different markets, like for example, here in Portugal, it's not just Lisbon and it's not just Porto, but there's all these other amazing little spots that you can go to. And just really opening up the whole digital nomad experience to be much more than just going and living in a city, which you could do anywhere in any city around the world, but also exposing people to a much broader based lifestyle. So I think, yeah, you're going to see a huge explosion. I think we're, we're saying like a 10x increase in digital nomads, uh, remote work travelers in the next several years coming off the pandemic. We're expecting that to be huge. Um, we think, like I said before, like 2000. And 21 is going to be the year of the nomad, or at least you're really kicking that off you know, from remote work into the digital nomad experience. And yeah, I think what you're going to see is as people travel the world too, they're going to, they're going to relocate. So just because I was born in Delaware or I was working in Atlanta or I was working in New York, I traveled the world for four years and I decided I want to live in Portugal. And I think a lot of nomads have made the same decision. So as you're opening up the world to people, all of a sudden they're finding a home base somewhere else. So I think, yeah, that just mm -hmm. creates a whole new 
set of opportunities for people. It allows people to live a lot more affordably, live much better lives. I think you're, there's gonna be a lot more focus around the environment. I think conscious entrepreneurship is really the wave of the future. We're in the midst, what I would say, we're in the midst of a revolution right now, whether you realize it or not, you know, it's been building up to this. I think you have a really conscious, younger entrepreneurial scene, especially coming from the digital nomads. You know, a lot of these people are super conscious. They've been living the digital nomad lifestyle. They're very focused on their yoga and their meditation. They're very focused on building conscious businesses that not only are good for the consumers, but also good for the communities, good for the, you know, good for the suppliers. So I think this is a huge shift you're going to see in business going forward, where it's not just about profit, but you're seeing actually a much more of an interest around, you know, businesses that are doing a lot more, you know, for the world than just that. So I think yeah, that's kind of the bigger picture on a smaller picture with Radim and I, you know, I think we're just helping to facilitate that. So we want to be able to facilitate this lifestyle for digital nomads, create a great experience, make it super affordable, very easy for them, real focus on service. You know, I think if we do that, we'll be successful. So we just got to stay focused, not lose track of the vision. And then I think to get there, you know, it is going to require some funding. So I think, you know, we're, we're looking at bringing on potentially some debt funding, maybe some equity funding. Uh, but looking at different funding sources to continue to grow the business. And, uh, you know, I know Radim's in this for the long haul. You know, for me, I'm a little bit older, so <laughs> I don't know where I'll be in five years. Hopefully, I'm just like surfing every day and I don't have to work. But uh, Radim seems to be trying to keep me busy, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Dave, are, are we going to see an investment from Gary V in the new company? <laughs> well, we'll have to see about that one. I think he gets a lot of requests, so. <laughs> you know, if we start showing some really good numbers, I wouldn't be surprised. But I think at the moment, yeah, we're just kind of, you know, on our own, focused on what we're we're doing at the moment. But yeah, we really like Gary V. Hopefully we'll be able to get him back on sometime. But I know he's so busy. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, um, I want to say thank you so much for both of you making the time to come on uh, today to talk. I th this has been super fun. Um, always love to uh, talk about this. Uh, with guys as smart as you guys. So thank you so, for, so much for coming on. Um, if anybody that's listening wants to check out Flatio or Nomad X um, and kind of, you know, get to booking, where can they do that? Where should they go? What should be the next steps for them? Definitely click on the nomadflatio.com or nomadx and uh, we'll, we are happy to provide them our services. I already shared with you, Mitko, some, you know, great discounts for your community. So definitely share it to them. And uh, we'll happy to help you guys whenever you can get in touch with me and uh, I'll do my best to help you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Um, I really appreciate it and uh, have an awesome day. And next time, hopefully we'll be able to do this uh, interview in person. Yeah, thank Mikhail. you very much. Thank you so much, man.